the longest time, part of me felt like I deserved what had happened to me. I stopped taking care of myself. I kind of hold myself up and, you know, went into a really big, you know, spell of depression. I had started hating myself so much that I felt like, well, maybe there is a reason why this happened. Maybe I deserve that thing that happened to me. You know, I did not a whole lot of racing, definitely a late bloomer, track and field, was wrestling in high school. Just kind of was living a semi-average childhood. When you're a teenager, you think you know better than everybody. So I was, you know, a young, dumb 13-year-old kid that started hanging out with the wrong kids and the wrong crowd. Started just making dumb decisions and kind of you know, falling apart from who I was and where I needed to be. Middle school's hard anyway, but definitely in middle school, I know there were a lot of issues with bullying. I don't think that we realized at the time how negative that group was. I think there was some times where he was just trying to connect with people. Sometimes those people have ulterior motives and um, you get befriended by people that ultimately really aren't your friends. I was at that point, you know, desperate to find a home, find a place where I fit in and belonged. Going into high school, that kind of came to a head. One day, uh, we were all kind of hanging out, and things got nasty really quick. And I really didn't know what was going on. I just said, we're going to go, you know, do dumb, dumb teenage stuff out in the woods. There was a little creek running through. I remember just kind of looking at the creek, and then, uh, Next thing I know, I smell something burning. I look back and I see everybody running away. Then I look down and realize that what I smell is my skin on fire. I was doused in gasoline and was lit on fire. I panicked for a brief moment. I ended up getting myself to the ground and rolling around in the mud and the dirt and stopped the fire. I remember just sitting there, just thinking, you know, what what just happened? I, my brain was just fried. I didn't know what to do. I was kind of frozen in fear. I'm literally sitting there with, with my legs, you know, charred off. Finally, one of the kids actually came back. I guess he felt guilty for what happened, and he ended up throwing me on his shoulder and dragging me back to his place. And that's when the pain started setting in. I remember the look in his eyes and the fear in his eyes. And it wasn't, wasn't guilt, it was just fear. He called me and said, Mom, I think you need to come get me. I, 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 the back of my leg is burned. It was so severe. It was the entire back of his leg. It wasn't until my mom pulled into the driveway and saw me that I really understood the gravity of the situation because the moment she saw me she just started crying in a way that i've uh, never seen in my life and i still to this day uh, get shook by uh, the look on her face it was horrific i've never seen anything like that. i've never seen somebody burn the entire back of their leg off it was horrible i remember getting to the hospital and they just had to start, you know, tearing off all the dead skin. That's probably four or five shots deep of morphine. Even through all the painkillers and drugs, it was the worst pain I've ever felt in my entire life. Obviously, I was in physical pain, but I didn't, I didn't want the stress of what was going to happen, the repercussions, who was going to get in trouble, was I going to get in trouble. I hated that look on my mom's face, and I didn't want my parents to worry. Even in that moment with all the pain going through through me, I couldn't stop thinking about all the other things. I couldn't take a moment to try to take care of myself. I was worrying about all these other stupid things that I shouldn't have been worrying about. He was in a ton of pain. It was horrible. You know, he was having to lay on his stomach for, I don't know, long periods of time because he couldn't move his leg and couldn't, you know, be on his back. Thank you. 
missed out on a lot of activities that I was into with sports and people and all the things going on in school. Didn't really have any people from school check in or visit. That was kind of the, f the first inklings of some of the, you know, the, the mental trauma setting hold was just how alone I felt in that moment. I was just kind of lost and hurt and in a lot of pain. And I think that escalated too into that there was a lot, of, I think, anger and rage kind of thing building up into him. It just got progressively worse and worse. I think that, you know, probably the first couple of years afterwards, I did a decent job of, you know, unhealthily shoving everything down and kind of ignoring it, which, you know, definitely it turned into a lot more long-term pain. Pretty much immediately started having major trust issues with everybody. I started to lose the ability to uh, share my emotions. I just wanted to be over the stress and the anxiety and, and everything that had happened. And I thought that shoving all that down and not acknowledging it would make it go away and make it heal quicker. Even thinking about it was, it was too stressful and it just hurt too much. first time driving a Legends car in Charlotte, I felt at home, I felt at peace for once. All of the chatter in my head that was the anxiety, the stress, the insecurities, they finally kind of all turned off. And when I was in the race car, I could just focus on the task at hand. I went up to the window net, leaned in, and he's like, that is the most fun I've had in my entire life. I mean, and he's never like that. So he instantly fell in love with it. gets behind the wheel, he's just all by himself doing what he wants to do. He's really at his best when he's away from everybody and in the race car. I had a lot of unhealthy coping mechanisms. I was a shut-in, would barely leave the apartment just sort of getting angry over stupid things. I just was always on edge, wanted to pick a fight or, or get into an argument about pretty much anything. I kind of had to have a couple of moments where I had some pretty big mess ups myself where my new career as a race car driver would probably come to a grinding halt if I didn't call myself out on my crap. Welcome to Darlington Raceway, the Southern 500. Southern 500 back in 2017 got into a wreck with uh, A.J. Allmendinger and Matt Benedetto. Trouble turned Brother. on, Cody Ware gets it, A.J. Allmendinger. What the f was he doing? Hey, go tell the 51 to uh, just quit racing. That one hurt, but I'm fine. Just destroyed. Afterwards on social media, I got beyond heated and ran my mouth off and said a lot of stupid stuff. I was, you know, mad at everybody but myself. I couldn't, I didn't want to take responsibility. Finally, my roommates had had enough too, and actually I got, got kicked out of, out of the apartment. And so it's like, if I don't, if I don't, you know, open myself up and lay it out on the table and, and call it what it is, you know, my, my new life is gonna, is gonna be put on halt because I have all these demons and insecurities from what I was dealing with in my past. I just didn't want to throw it all away. One of the first steps I had was calling my mom and saying, hey, you know, I know you're always telling me about trying some meds and trying some therapy. I'm willing to give it a go. I believe that therapy helps and medication and that we could, you know, come up with a plan that would help him. It was a long process. I've been through a lot of different therapists. You know, there's not a one size fits all. I thought it was gonna be quick and easy. Like, okay, hey, you're gonna sit down with a therapist. You're gonna talk through it you know, bam, it's done, you're better. It's a process, it's a, it takes work and, and effort. You have to wake up every day to make, you know, a conscious decision to get better, to seek help. On a daily basis, human interaction gets a lot easier. You have a better outlook and a mindset, and you don't just wake up in the morning with this, this anger and this hatred and resentment for, for who I am and, and what I've been through. 
when you can start to see the hard work pay off. It doesn't make the work easier, but it gives you that bit of motivation to keep digging. I wanted to be the person that wasn't there for me when I was going through all these issues. You can see it in the garage. I'm sure you can see it in other sports. There's people that are dealing with things and they're too afraid to talk about it. And the more I saw that, the more passion and fire it put in me to show that, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a race car driver, I'm an athlete, but I still deal with problems and it's okay to deal with problems. Trying to destigmatize the fact that depression and anxiety are these bad things or you're, you're weird or you shouldn't have these problems. There are lots of people that hurt and lots of people that put a mask on every day that are dealing with things and it's okay to feel that way. I'm really proud of him and it's a, it's a courageous thing to do, you know, that he's using what he's battled with, you know, to make a positive difference. There's a whole bunch of people that have reached out that said, man, I, I can't, I could hardly get out of bed this morning and get to work and seeing what you posted made all the difference in the world. I'd say all in all, I'm proud of where I'm at. Every day is a, is a conscious decision to fight the fight that I'm here to fight. I want to get myself better so that I can have more energy and more time to, to give back and, and to be a part of these causes that are obviously uh, so close to my heart. People, I think, will listen to him. And he really is a down-to-earth person, and he's willing to, to share some of the scarier parts of his life. I think that is what transcends um, into other people, and they can get um, the comfort in that he's real and what he's dealing with. And I think he can save some people's lives, and I might want him to save his life too. I don't hold any ill will towards the people that were involved. I believe in God and believe in a bigger purpose, and I believe that everyone deserves to be forgiven. And at the end of the day, you know, what happened happened, and you know, people can change and things can get better. It gave me a lot of battles to deal with internally, but it also put me on a path where I feel like um, I have a purpose and a mission, and I'm, I'm trying to be a part of something bigger now.